Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Did anyone else think the CIA guy's slides were all just going to be black? <laughs> just me. I feel like I'm going to get in trouble for that. But it is a huge honor to be here at Strata and Hadoop World talking about what I call data for the best of intentions. You know, one of the things I love about O'Reilly is they're always thinking about how to do more with data, use data for good. And yet we know that sometimes we miss the mark. And so I want to talk today a little bit about some of the ways that we think we could be doing data for good just a little bit better. So if you're not familiar with Datakind, we are a nonprofit that believes that this data revolution is exactly that, a revolution. And that means that everyone is being touched by digital data, including people like this. Nonprofits and social change organizations that are awash in data, whether that be from cell phone services that they're using for delivery, satellite imagery, or open government data. And that means that we now have an opportunity to use the same algorithms that we're writing to boost profits to instead boost social impact. It's an incredibly exciting time, but, you know, of course, not every nonprofit in Nigeria has a data scientist. So that's where Datakind comes in. We build collaborations between pro bono data scientists who want to give back with social change organizations that could be using machine learning and AI to maximize their impact. It's kind of like Doctors Without Borders for data scientists. And in the past, we've done projects like work with Crisis Text Line. They're a group that provides counseling directly to teens via text message, and we use machine learning to prioritize the most urgent cases so they could serve over 100,000 more teens with the same resources. Or we worked with a group like Give Directly to use satellite imagery to estimate the poverty levels of villages in Kenya and Uganda just by looking at the roofs on different structures. These thatched roofs over here are areas that are a little bit poorer than people that can afford metal roofs. And by analyzing this imagery, that now means that GiveDirectly doesn't have to send people door to door. They can build one of these roofiness maps in just two hours. And so these are the projects we love to see. Cases where machine learning and AI are being used for social impact. And so in our three years as an organization, we've done over 60 of these projects with 7,000 volunteers and expanded to six international chapters. And now as exciting as I, I am about Datakind's success, what's even more exciting is that there is a veritable data for good movement afoot. If you're not aware, there is a groundswell of more people giving back to do data for good. Groups like Data Science for Social Good and Bayes Impact that are providing fellowships for data scientists to give back. That's awesome. You can't swing a dead cat without hitting a social good hackathon or competition where you can hack poverty on your nights and weekends. And now we're seeing corporations get in on this too, offering their employee time and free software to give back to the cause. So this is an incredibly exciting time. We as a community have built an army of do-good data scientists. Huge big data vendors are giving software and services back, and we now feel like we can make huge amounts of world-changing data science solutions. And I am here to tell you that almost all of those efforts are totally going to miss the mark. Wait, what? I hear what you're saying. You, Jake, you're getting me all psyched up about data for good. I was about to volunteer, and now you're telling me it's going to miss the mark? Dude, don't play with my heart. There is, in fact, I understand, there is, in fact, a real movement afoot. And we're poised to make serious change. But to do that, we're going to have to start thinking a little bit differently about the problems that we're trying to save and, or excuse me, solve, Freudian slip, the problems we're trying to solve and how we're trying to solve them. And I'll show you a quick example of what I mean. This is a woman with a hernia in Africa. And hernias are when your intestines push through your abdominal walls. They're imminently treatable, but yet 50,000 people die every year in Africa from untreated hernias, largely because one of the treatments, a mesh that you wear around your belly, is incredibly expensive. So a very enterprising doctor realized, hey, wait a second. We've got these mosquito nets over our beds that look like they'd work just as well. Why don't we use those? So he starts using the mosquito nets. They work just as effectively at one four thousandth of the price, and boom, this guy just hacked hernias, right? This is a hack. It's like a social sector hack, and that's really exciting. We love hacks. They're very fulfilling. And yet, very few problems really work this way. And in fact, when we start to look at societal long-ranging problems, they actually transcend into a different class of problem. A class of problem that Horst Rattel in 1973 deemed wicked problems. And Horst said that a wicked problem is a problem that is difficult or impossible to solve because of incomplete, contradictory, and changing requirements that are often difficult to recognize. Now, almost all, every social sector issue fits this description and includes with that an ill-defined end state. You know, when have we solved poverty? What does that look like? The solutions are not mathematically right or wrong. They're good or bad, which includes values. And the problems are so interconnected that no single party has view of the whole space. Even if you're trying to do something simple like improve nutrition in school lunches, you immediately get down a rabbit hole of looking at poverty and race and politics that is so complicated there's not one piece you can attack. 
And that is what I'm talking about when I say we're using data for the best of intentions. Because it's great that we're volunteering and we're offering new free software. And it's so great that we're going to hackathons and using open data from government to build new solutions and cool apps. But there's still at the end of the day just a small piece of the puzzle. Alone, they are hacks. But we really believe there's a way to take that excitement and actually turn it into something more sustainable. And that's why we want to talk about five principles for applying big data and data science to social good. Now, for the sake of time, I'm just going to tell you about my favorite three. But we did just release an article on Radar that goes into the depths of all these five that I encourage you all to check out. And the first that uh, I want to talk about is that finding problems can be a lot harder than finding solutions. And that's largely because data scientists understand what the technology can do. Social organizations understand the problems that need to be solved. And this is pretty much what the Venn diagram looks like and how much they understand about each other. And so you get cases like the Red Cross coming to us and saying, hey, we've got a great data science problem for you. So lay it on us. They said, we've got this database in Access 2000 that we'd like to upgrade to Access 2007. You ready for that? I'm like, yeah, well, you know, we could do that. That's probably needed. But as good data scientists, we asked, well, what are you trying to do? They said, well, you know, there's all these preventable fires in Chicago. You know, we know that people put space heaters under wool blankets when they're cold, and that can start fires, light up a whole building, and kill people. And we want them to stop doing it, but the only way we know how to do it is just put out brochures all across the city and hope they read them. And so a data scientist on the team said, hey, you know, in that database, you've got all this historical data about fires, and we know that Chicago has open data about building violations and building codes. We could possibly put that together to build a predictive model of where those fires could occur mind-blown moment, right? Red Cross goes, oh my God, you could do that? Well, if you could do that, hey, well, I've got this other problem for you in another data set. And before you know it, you're seeing this wonderful back and forth where together they're scoping the problem. And that's really what we need to see is facilitating those kinds of conversations. And if you're listening carefully to that story, you'll notice the data scientists also had to find the data. Now, get ready for that because our definition of data in this room is totally different than the definition of data in the social sector, which usually means something that I intentionally put into Excel, not granular video, photo, or real-time data. So if you want to go do data science for good, be prepared to go out and find the problem and find the data set, and they're probably not even going to live in the same place. Now, of course, what goes with that is the critical principle that communication is king. It's so much more important than the technology that we're building. Now, anyone who's done consulting probably knows this rule, but uh, at Datakind, we have a strict no-jargon rule. Because we know we have a lot of people who know all about APIs, a lot of people love talking about SDGs, and some of the biggest derailments in our projects have been having people think they both know what those mean. So we get very strict about making sure people have a space to use the same language. And as a rule, I would say to everyone, never say the words p-value to anyone unless they say it to you first. It's just a good rule of thumb. And then lastly, there's this principle of designing with, not for. And this is very big in the design community right now, but this basically gets down to the idea that you really need to be thinking about who you're co-creating solutions with. And at the end of the day, we're not trying to build a data science thing, a data science solution. We're trying to create behavior change. And as Alistair Kroll says, if you've got a metric that doesn't change behavior, that's a bad metric. And I'd add on to say that's the same for data science solutions. So you really need to get the end user involved in the creation part of the process, or you're likely going to build something very shiny and very cool that no one ever uses. And the thing is, if we do this badly, we actually have a real chance of doing harm. Now, I'll give you an example. We did a project with Amnesty International where we helped build an algorithm that would predict the, or excuse me, prioritize human rights violations by urgency. And the algorithm was really easy to write, but we had to think. Did our data scientists know enough about the situation of dissidents in Jordan to incorporate that into the model? Who was the field agent at Amnesty International who was going to use this logistic regression? Would they know if it worked? What about if it needed to be retrained? So you start to raise questions not just about who's going to use this at the end of the day, but as DJ said yesterday, where's the ethical responsibility that we all have in creating these solutions when we disappear and leave someone with an SVM? That's really critical, especially when the stakes are high. So if these principles don't sound like cool data science principles, you know, they're not. They're really design principles. But we think that's what's going to take us beyond just these initial excitement to real lasting change. You know, the heroes in the stories about satellite imagery and cell phone text message uh, solutions are not the data sets and the algorithms. They're the people that spent months working together, building trust, finding the problem, finding the data, realizing that's the wrong problem, realizing that's the wrong data before the work ever started. You know, we often say that 90% of data science work is the unsexy janitorial work of data munging and wrangling. If that's true, I'd say 90% of the data science for social good work is problem munging and problem wrangling. So O'Reilly has a phrase that I really like, work on stuff that matters. That line resonates with us at Datakind and may have even been the inspiration for us starting our organization. 
So it's no coincidence that three years later, from when we announced Datakind, then Data Without Borders, on the Strata New York stage, we are announcing a partnership here with O'Reilly to continue to explore this issue of applying data science for social good. And what that means is we're going to be sharing these learnings, like the one that I mentioned on Radar. Please go read that article. But also finding new ways to you know, bring out the ways that you are using data science for social good to Strata and other channels. We really want to celebrate all the wins that we are all having here. And more than just the volunteer offerings we usually offer, there will be more ways to get involved. For example, we are hiring for a data science fellow for a year in the Bay Area to work with our Datakind Labs team on a Vision Zero initiative. This is an initiative to bring pedestrian deaths around the country down to zero. It's going to require a lot of really cool design from using the Department of Transportation's data to Uber. So please check that out at datakind.org slash careers if you are interested. And so I will close, I think, by quoting what DJ said best, that this is our time as a data science community, to make radical change on some of the world's most pressing problems. We really believe that to be true. And we've already seen so many of you step up because, like I said at the start, we really see this as a revolution, and a revolution is about people. So whether you've been the people who've supported us from the start, you know, O'Reilly and Cloudera and Strata Hadoop World, some of our sponsors like IBM or Microsoft or Informatica, or just the people who have volunteered on our projects, actually doing the yeoman's work, we really feel that together, this is our community that's going to make this happen. Because now we can go beyond just having problem solvers to actually using problem explorers. You know, we need more than just free software, we need free thinkers. And we can do more with just the, the weekend excitement to actually looking and tapping our community's lifelong passion. So we really, really believe that it's all of us in this room that have the potential to make that change, and that with those ideas as a community, we can go beyond just using data for the best of intentions to actually using data to make a real difference. Thank you very much. Hope to see you on the front lines.